Man, does that traditional martial arts even really work? Um, wait, what? Like you're doing cool punches and kicks and stuff like that. Like it looks cool, but does it actually work in a street fight where there are actually no rules? What? Of course it does. What are you talking about? Yeah, but like forms, I don't understand how you expect to use a form in an actual street fight. Like you can't just do the same pattern and it always works. It's not how that works. Of course, that's not what forms are for though. I still don't get it, but if you think you can make it make sense, then the stage is yours. What's up guys, it's the only ninja wearing aviators and a superhero hat and welcome to the modern ninja. Now, literally I get this question all the time. Why, how forms are helpful? Why, what is the point in learning forms? Um, traditional martial arts is, you know, useless. I get that all the time. And so I'm here to break down my five best reasons because there's definitely more than five, but my five favorite reasons um, that martial arts is super useful. And this is almost entirely unscripted. So editing DJ is probably gonna hate me. I already do. So the first reason you're gonna be training tra traditional martial arts is because of your reaction time. You wanna train these super traditional, ultra exaggerated blocks in slow motion or in when you're, you know, relaxed in a safe environment and stuff like that. So that when you're actually in a dangerous environment, actually in a situation where you need to react immediately, although you're not gonna do, you know, your complete full chambered, um, you know, correct traditional block, but you will get your hand up in time to protect you and keep you safe. You're not trying to train the technique so that you're gonna use perfect technique in the real fight. The, the initial reactions and the techniques you wanna train, right, all come from um, a base. So if you train to perfection, if you train perfection in your forms, then you get a better looking and a more effective block and realistically so that you're prepared for your next strike and prepared for, uh, you know, to win the fight that you're in. And you know, because this is not scripted, I might be uh, rambling, it just is what it is. So sorry about that. It was only one bullet point so far and I rambled so much. Like, why am I so bad at this? How am I so bad at this? <laughs> I'm sure editing DJ will edit it out begrudgingly. But truly, you wanna practice those traditional blocks so that when push comes to serve and you need to immediately react, it's still strong enough to protect you and it's still um, secure and has the fundamentals to protect you and you won't really have to think about it because you're used to throwing full blocks every time. So throwing a quick one just to keep you safe or a quick guard to keep you safe is automatic. Finally, the point is done. I, I've been repeating myself so much. Let me know if you guys actually enjoy this. If you actually like Unscripted DJ and seeing editing DJ's rage for it, let me know. And for number two, it's more of the offensive techniques, right? You wanna get rid of the bad habits that can hurt you. Things like having an incorrect fist. When you're doing traditional punches, right? You can make sure your fist is tight, your thumb is tucked under, you're hitting with the first two knuckles. You can take your time to perfect that because in a real fight, when you throw your punches or palm starts or whatever it is that you're using to attack, you can use those techniques and actually use them in a way that doesn't get you injured. Because if you break your hand in a street fight, you know, let's say you're, there's somebody trying to fight you, hurt you, or maybe a group of people trying to fight you or hurt you, maybe two people just pull up on you. If you break your hands, on the first guy, the second guy, you have now broken hands and you've given yourself a, a, a weakness, a, a injury. A disadvantage. I was trying to think of the word disadvantage, but I suck at English and speaking as a whole. <laughs> so dumb. It, even if it's just one person, let's say there's a, a somebody trying to attack you and you hit them, right? And you break your hand on the first hit. Now you are at a disadvantage and now the likelihood of you winning and possibly even surviving is less. So with traditional martial arts, you practice the form of punching correctly or the form of kicking correctly, right? With the correct parts of your legs or foot, depending on the type of kick you're doing. And that way, when you do them in a more realistic scenario in a more high tense and high stress scenario, your natural reaction is now bang, throwing it correctly, fist closed, it's not loose, your thumb's not sticking out, and you're fine every time. 
You can't really train the technique in a active combat situation. You can't learn the technique. You can't learn those details with you're always under stress. You have to sometimes take time to step down away from the stress and learn how to correctly throw a punch. So then you can practice doing that. And once you've mastered it, once you've actually gotten comfortable, you'll do it no problem under stress. Oh, well, not no problem, but you'll do it under stress. Number three is weapons of opportunity. This, cut that out. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's staying in. I'm so dumb. <laughs> Why am I doing this to myself? This is a bow staff. Many of you guys have seen me use bow staffs in very different ways all over my channel. I love using weapons. And unless you're me, you probably don't carry a bow staff around with you at all times. So it's not really something you can use, right, for self-defense in any realistic situation. However, having a stick, finding some kind of club, bat, crowbar, um, any kind of straight object can be used in any self-defense situation with the same techniques that you learned with other weapons. For example, your sword strike, your just your traditional downward sword strike can apply to so many different things. Not only can it apply to a stick, but can also apply to a coffee cup or water bottle that you carry around when you're jogging. Or things like rope darts and chain whips, which I don't really have right now, can apply to a belt, allowing you to use it in a self-defense situation without hurting yourself, right? And again, those skills don't come out of nowhere. They take time to practice, they take time to get comfortable to use, and honestly, using a weapon that you're not comfortable with is a great way to injure yourself. So allowing you to practice with those more traditional weapons will build the base skills that you can learn to use uh, impromptu or weapons of opportunity. I mean, that's kind of cool, but, but have you guys ever juggled eggs before? Wait, wait, juggle high, juggle high. Oh, oh. Ow! Ow! Ah. Happy Easter. <laughs> now I have to put this out on Easter. Editing DJ is gonna hate you. Yeah, editing DJ is not gonna put this out on Easter. For number four, we have our endurance. Endurance is incredibly important for several different reasons because honestly, when it comes down to it, no matter how good of a fighter you are, no matter how much training you have, if you can't outlast your opponent, if you get winded and tired before they do, they will probably win. And so having that training, having that endurance training to go with your forms, because many forms aren't necessarily slow, they're very active, very dynamic, and very intense. And it causes you to build up your stamina, not only just like your jogging stamina, but also your stamina to be able to punch over and over and over, your stamina to be able to kick over and over and over, your stamina to be able to move your body like a martial artist consistently over a long period of time. Now. That stuff is not easy to come by. And so with traditional forms, it allows you to practice and gain those skills in a safe environment. And for many martial arts, it allows you to train different things and keep your training interesting, fun, and engaging all while still training that core, um, that core fundamental. Like, honestly, ask yourself right now, if you had to do the same one technique, or maybe let's make it a combo, you had to do the same three techniques over and over and over again for 10 years, would you do it? For the vast majority of you, the answer is no. However, if you work on the fundamentals in various different forms, whether that's combinations, whether that's forms, whether that's live sparring, all these different things, it makes it much more likely that you will actually make it to the end of your training because regardless of how you make it to the end of your training, getting to the end of your good training and, and, and well-executed training is the most important. You're gonna have to cut out that audio, DJ. I don't know how you're gonna do it, but good luck. How? If you don't, we're the same person. We're the same person. If you don't know, I don't know. And so by the end of that 10 years, if you've trained in various different types of styles, various different types of ways, like form, sparring, individual techniques and all that stuff, live combat, then you'll actually like your training at the end of it and you'll be much better off for it. And number five, which is kind of a mix of traditional forms and sparring, right? And like point sparring and stuff like that is 
you want to be able to understand how your body mechanics works and more importantly you want to understand how the body mechanics of your opponents work if you see them for example rear back you know a punch is coming if you see them lean back with their foot rate or with their knee raise you know a kick can be coming if you see them rotate right a certain way you can see kicks coming if you see them um rearing back the back arm versus throwing that front arm and that allows you to be more prepared to counter whatever they're attacking it also allows you to hide your own tells if i know what my body it does naturally for a tell like let's say if i'm throwing a jab and i naturally wind up backwards to throw my jab right which is a really common one a great way to cut that out would be to just not move your shoulder back instead just push forward right there's a really great video of michael j white explaining this to um oh my gosh what did you explain this to bobby michael j white taught the punching mechanic to who uh in the, it is backstage one of the films like blood and bone uh it was hold up the hand through the, the slow jab while you can't see it coming come on okay. cool thank you now notice the speed of the first two right you ready yeah that's one Two. Okay, now here's the third one. Don't let me hit it. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> <Out of hell. laughs> Man, what would I do without friends? But, <laughs> like, uh, Michael Jai was talking to Kimbo Slice about this exact thing. If you learn how to hide your tells, slow techniques become fast, right? If you learn how to hide your tells, fast techniques become impossible to tell, impossible to stop, especially to an untrained eye. So, having that background in forms and breaking down each technique slowly allows you to not only understand when you see a tell, but also keep them from seeing your tells, which takes you to a whole nother level. It's honestly partly why um, martial artists are on such a different level than non-trained people. It's it's a large reason because in a in a non-martial artist's brain, they don't have the natural reaction, they don't have the, the foresight to be able to tell what's coming, and they don't have the ability to hide what they're about to do. All of which puts you on an entire different level, entire different ball game for uh, martial artists. Like, when you are able to do those things, when you're able to see what's coming before it comes, when you're able to hide your tells, when you're able to, to outlast your opponents, honestly, all of these things, that's what makes you that's what makes martial artists good at combat. That's what makes martial artists better than untrained people is that that ability to, you know, master your your combat. I am so bad at rambling, guys. Like, I'm sorry. But this video is probably super long, so I appreciate you guys sticking around. Make sure you drop a like, because that would be super nice. I very much appreciate it. But if you want me to do more unscripted videos like this, let me know down in the comments. I'd, I'd love to find out. But with all that said, my name's DJ Moore. This is The Modern Ninja, and I'm out. If you like this video, check out this one about the best martial artist in the world, Tong Sudo. I am totally not biased. And you could also check out this other video that YouTube thinks you'll like as well. Either way, I'll see you guys in the next one.